Justin Ross with Fluke by Medical, and in this video, we're going to show you how to pre do preventive maintenance checks and services on the Alaris 8100 infusion pump. But instead of using the scales and beakers and pressure meters like you would traditionally, we're going to show you how to do the same testing with a Fluke by Medical Ida 6 and its IntelliPump technology, and maybe show you some time savings and increased accuracy. So let's go ahead and we we'll get started on this. So we're going to need a few things here. We're going to know how to need our infusion pump. We need the layer software. We still have to run the layer software because we have to run all the tests and adjust everything through this software. We're also going to need to have our calibrated tubing set from the layers, as well as our Ida 6 infusion pump analyzer. Now this analyzer is a two channel analyzer, one, two. I could add more if I wanted to, but because you can only run one channel at a time with the layers, we're just going to go ahead and use channel four here. So I selected channel four of Ida 6. The next thing we need to do is Alaris likes to read everything in grams, grams per hour, and then the PSI for the pressures. So let's go into settings, and we'll go to settings here, and we're going to go to units, and we're going to set up PSI, grams per hour, and our volume into grams. So that's set up and ready to go. I should also mention, if you moved your I-6 recently in elevation, maybe went from the mountains down to the seaside, you might want to go ahead and take some time and go ahead and zero out your pressure transducers just to make sure you get good zeroed readings. All right, since we're in channel four, channel four is zeroed out, and let's go back to our main screen. And in this case, we're not gonna use the workflow automation. We're gonna go ahead and use this in manual mode because we have to use Alaris' software. So let's pick major. All righty. Now let's go ahead and we'll get started into this test. Now I'm not gonna focus on all their tests, more or less the ones you do with those scales and beakers and pressure meters, but we'll start off with preventive maintenance and we'll six select started test and we're in channel a so this is the instrument inspection or we go through and check it out for the general overall condition make sure it's clean nothing's broken uh we're gonna check the other door and i did all these things prior to doing the test so we're just going to breeze through these and push past next we do the air in line test so i have my test cassette for that and i will put this in here like so all right and this is just a old test cassette that we removed the bag from, so it works very nice for this. And close this. And let's go and do this air in line test. All right, and that is finished. All right, so now we're going to do the patient side occlusion. So let's talk about something here for a second. I mentioned we're going to use the Intel pump technology, so this is a little bit different than what you might be used to. You notice that my test bag is quite small. This is only a 250 milliliter bag. Uh, and I have about 100, 150 milliliters of slu uh, fluid in it. And this is just pure water because pure water at room temperature weighs 1.00 grams per 1.00 milliliters. So I know it's a direct conversion. And that's why you'll see some of the software reads in milliliters. That's how it reads in grams because it's a direct. Um, I like using pure distilled water. If you have to, tap water works, but pure distilled water is much better the better way. Now you notice from my bag, I have a test cassette that pulls the water from here through my test cassette through the IV pump and the ID6, where it has a highly precise piston-driven stepper motor, which is going to measure the fluid and then push it right back up this return line back into my bag. With that, as I'm testing, any fluid it pulls out, it pushes it right back in. So I have a static water line. It will not change. This is great because as I'm reading, take your readings throughout the day, I'll have a consistency. It'll have the same exact head pressure from the time I start, 100 pumps later, same water level. So there we go. Let me hang that back up here on my office um, infusion pump, IV pole, chain. Here we go. All right, so now it says, look, back to the software, load a prime regular set and close the door. So let's go ahead and we'll load this up. Make sure everything's in there nice. And in the channel, we don't want to break anything. There we go. And close this and the door. On the ID6, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to occlusion. And there's an advantage here. By running the ID6, it's going to capture my peak pressure. If you use the pressure meter, once it hits that peak pressure and senses the occlusion, it's going to start to back it off. Here it's different. It's going to capture it for me. So. You might notice that I'm reading a negative 1.3 PSI, but as soon as I press go on the software, press next on the software, 
and it starts that um, priming cycle, my pressure automatically dropped to 0 0.00, just like the software called for to start at a zero PSI. So 0 0.00, once I reach 0.4 milliliters on the software, I can push go. So I'm at 0 0.6, now I'll push play on the ID6. And you're gonna see my pressure starting to build up here. And there it is. My peak pressure is 9.05 PSI. You notice in my graph here, my pressure is going down. It's so right now at 7.04, 6.86. If you're using a normal pressure meter, you have to be paying attention when that peak pressure hits, or you might not get the exact reading and have to repeat the test. Here it captured it for me. So I'm exactly 9.05 PSI. Type that into here. And that is a passing score. And I'll push next, and it's going to take me on. Oh, it says the pass is going to mark. So we're going to mark the pass. And now we're going to do the fluid slide occlusion. So I'm just going to discard the test on the ID6. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to start the fluid slide occlusion, testing this side. So push next. And my fluid just passing straight through the system. I didn't have to change anything. I didn't have to change my test setup. And then once I reach 0.4 milliliters, 0.4 milliliters, I can pinch my tubing. I'm at 0.4 now, so I'll simply pinch my tubing off. And it says pump occluded. A pass result will be recorded, in, recorded for this device. Finish. Now we're on to the rate accuracy. This is where you'd be using graduated cylinders and scales. I like his six so much better because I'm a little older and I don't like bending over and my back hurts and all that. So this is so easy. Now I'm just going to go to flow and volume. I don't need to change my test setup even again. And it's going to push a total of 12.00 milliliters. So the first thing this software is going to want to do is run a priming cycle. So I'm not going to start the edit six yet. I'm just going to let this priming cycle pass through. And it's going to push four milliliters. That's going to make sure that we don't have any more air in the line. So we're going to do that, and we're going to make sure there's no air bubbles coming through. Everything's looking good. 2 milliliters, 2.5, 3, 4 milliliters. It says balance the scale and mark 0. Since I'm not using the scale, I'm using this analyzer. I don't have to do that. The only thing I need to do is... I have my analyzer set up to start when flow is detected and stop when flow ends. So I'm going to push play. And as soon as I push next on the layer software, it will start that flow. And my infusion pump analyzer is so fine, it knows it takes exactly three microliters, 0 0.003 milliliters. And it knows it takes exactly that much fluid to start it. And it will go back in time and mark that start point. That's what gives us the super high resolution of the ID6. We're also going to use an, al an algorithm. So at the very end of the flow, when the uh, the flow stops, it'll see a 50% drop of the flow. And it'll say, ah, when the flow stops, that's the end of the test. And it'll mark the end of it. So again, I don't have to be sitting here and catch it. Does that last droplet that went into the beaker scale, does it count? Does it not count? Did I remember to zero it out? All that's gone. I'm just going to sit here and let my ID6 run and the Alaris pump run. Um, we're running at 500 milliliters an hour, according to the software. I'm reading average of 495.6. Um, instantaneous flow is 496 point. It's 497. If I wanted to, I could actually expand this out and look at my flow graph and see if I have any spikes or valleys. You can see a little bit here as it was averaging out. Now it is averaged out nice and steady, and I have my instantaneous flow in blue and my average flow in purple, and everything is looking good there. So if I wanted to, and I had a second computer, I could start another ID6 on channel 1 and get it going over here. Maybe I'm testing some other pumps, feeding pumps, strength pumps. I get that going on another channel. I can push here and see both of them, and you heard it just ding. I had a great advantage here again. Is I didn't have to be sitting there watching it. I know my software is going to catch the end of that test. We go back to my normal screen. And my total volume 
was 11.94 grams. Let's put that into the, soft, into the software. 11.94. And hit next. And that is a passing score. The rest of the test, we're not going to really show you in this video because it, these are the things that you do in just the pump. We're going to do things like checking to make sure the door safety clamps work, the simultaneous displays work, the IUI connectors, alarms, keypads. The rest of the things you'll just be using the layer software for. It won't need any additional test equipment. So thank you very much for joining us today and watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.